Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Created by Rebecca. In this week's video, we are going to be unboxing a Jackson's haul. Let's get started. Storm Eunice is currently raging in the background, so if you hear weird wind noises or see the trees doing that, then that's why. It's a bit crazy out there at the moment. Now I have already opened this box just to take the invoice out and make sure everything was here, which of course it is. As with all Jackson's boxes, they use paper tape, they don't use plastic tape, which is lovely. And the packing inside is crumpled up paper. And there are three things in this box. One, two, three. This is my very first Sea White of Brighton sketchbook of any sort. This is the watercolour travel journal. It's 60 pages, 200 GSM, and it is a not or cold pressed finish. guinea pigs think it's vegetables. It's not vegetables. I love you. It's not vegetables. I have three guinea pigs. This is a hardback sketchbook which would be great for traveling because it gives you a solid surface to work on if you're trying to sort of sketch on the go. It has an elasticated strap and then a paper band around it just with the description of what it is. This is a case bound landscape format watercolour sketchbook which means that it opens up into what could be a really wide panorama. Beautifully stitched, lovely texture. I will dial you in a little bit closer in a second so you can have a look. But yes, the idea is that you can use both sides of this paper. Lots of watercolour paper has only been prepared on one side, so you can never quite get the same results with your watercolours when you're working. This, however, is both sides. And if we go right to the back, there's a little pocket. It's quite a big pocket, actually. You could put memorabilia of your travels in the back of your sketchbook. So tickets to things and whatever you like really. <laughs> Jackson's were having a paper sale so I got this at £16.49. It is usually more than that. I'm hoping you will be able to just make out the texture. It's not a super duper textured paper. It is quite subtle. And you can see the lovely secure stitching here. Oh, we also have one of those ribbon dividers, though I find once you start using a sketchbook you really don't need one of these because you can see which pages you're working on quite clearly. It is laying flat quite nicely in these early pages. Let's see how we do when we get into the middle. I mean the, the, the book is lying flat. We've got a little bit of bounce here in the middle. You could always put a bulldog clip across the top just to help hold it flat for you while you're working so that all your colours don't try and flow away from the centre. That feels like it might be a little tiny bit of adhesive on the stitching, so you might just need to be aware of that when you're doing across pages. This is essentially several books bound together. So I think there's at least four pads of folded paper 
that have then been stitched together again in the binding. So you've got, I believe, four chances of hitting a stitched section where you can see the stitching and there may possibly just be a tiny bit of adhesive. I think that's what it is. I don't think it is the sort of a punch where they've made the holes. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a little tiny bit of adhesive seepage from the binding process. But you have got all the other sheets that don't have that. So you could do across the spread on one of these quite happily. And this is two sheets of A4 side by side that you could do an amazing panorama on. The next thing I bought is the Jacquard three hole pencil sharpener. It contains the sharpenings as well so that's great. I have another pencil sharpener which has two holes, that's by Derwent, and it's rubbish. I can't fit most of my coloured pencils in it. This one, according to the Jackson's website, they have a whole breakdown of uh, the different types of sharpeners they have available. And this one does really well on their sort of checklist of what it's capable of doing. So it has two holes there, and then in what is effectively the cap is a third hole which is labelled for coloured pencils. And then to get the sharpenings out, it's probably easiest to go from the sort of the hinged side and just ease it apart. Be over a rubbish bin when you do this. <laughs> and there's the other side. And the Jacquard three-way pencil sharpener was £2.90. Nice. This is my current pencil sharpener, which captures all the shavings. It is the Derwent two-hole. And it annoys the heck out of me, because it just doesn't fit any of my pencils in. This is quite an old Derwent pencil. And... It, it it just spins. This is a polychromos. It just spins. This is a very ancient pencil indeed. This is a Beryl Charisma colour. I've had these since I was probably about 15 or 16. But I treasured them so much that I've still got lots of them left. The yellow ochre is down to a stub and in an extender but yeah it's such a gorgeous set. They came in such a lovely package of a, sort of a box with craft paper on it and yeah they were a thing of beauty and I just didn't want to use them. <laughs> it was stupid really. Stupid. Art supplies are there to be used. This just spins. Let's try a Caran d'Ache Luminance. Nope. I have to sharpen that one with a knife at the moment. And then let's try the Derwent drawing pencil. Surely. It's a Derwent pencil. It should fit. Surely. It spins in the small one and it's too small for the big one. So the big test is going to be whether the Jacquard three hole actually works better. <laughs> Here is a polychromos that I have had to knife sharpen. You can see that the tip is quite blunt because you can see shine on it and you can see the uneven um, carving from using a knife. I 
okay, it fits in the colour. Oh, it's making good noises. <gasps> oh. Oh. Wow. Not even a hint of shine on that tip. It's sharpened it quite short but left a, a decent amount of colour open that's that's fun okay let's try uh, yes let's go to the Derwent drawing you can see the sort of faceting there again where I've cut with a knife really blunt weird shaped tip into the colour. I didn't expect to be stunned by a sharpener, but oh! Look at that! And as I like to use my coloured pencils in a sketchbook while I'm sitting on the sofa, that means that I can sharpen them as well without getting shavings everywhere. Yes! Oh, that's fantastic! Okay, uh, so let's try my, my ancient chariz charisma colour. Charisma. Charisma colour, yes. didn't do that one quite so intently, so I've got a little bit of a, a weird tip on it, but... Wow! Let's try the Caran d'Ache Luminance. The fact that it fits all these different coloured pencils is fantastic. bit of swarf on that one so I'm just going to run that round in my palm oh gosh that's perfect oh. this, this, this might be the holy grail of sharpeners I for £2.90 wow okay let's go with the Derwent Studio turquoise green considerably smaller there's a, a lot of wiggle room there I'm not going to push I'm just going to twist yes okay any other sorts of pencils in here that we need to be looking at. I've done that. So we've also got a couple of Derwent Light Fast. Um, so that's before. Again you can see it's blunt because we've got shining on the tip. literally perfect <sighs> this is the Derwent sketching 4B so obviously I'm not going to pop this into the coloured pencil hole so I'm going to put it into the oh it fits in the smallest okay yep um, it fits into the smallest of the other two holes. So there we go. Very shiny point again. So not sharp at all. Yeah. Oh my word. 
So the colour pencil sharpener has a, a plastic body, the normal graphite has a metal body, hence why one is black and one is silver. Ooh, I've got a little tiny bit of shine on the tip there, so it's not perfectly sharp. And I could do a fraction better than that with a knife. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and that's quite a chunky pencil. And just for comparison, I'm going to take... This is actually another Derwent Sketching 4B. that yes we can and I'm going to try it in the Derwent two hole sharpener this has a plastic body I think this is just a dud sharpener I don't know so that's just spinning I'll not take it out of shot for you. There we go. It's possibly even blunter than it was before. And then I'm going to try it in the big, the big hole one. It has so much slot. And no, it just spins in that. What is the point, Derwent? Your sharpener can't even sharpen your own pencils. What is the point? Well, hello, Jackar. Three way pencil sharpener. Welcome to my art kit. You will be a permanent resident. When Jackson send out things like watercolours and pencils, my experience is that they like to use boxes that have previously contained things to save on packing and breakage. So I've got a little mixture of pencils here. I've got some Derwent Lightfast, some Caran d'Ache Luminance, some Derwent Drawing, and a couple of Polychromos as well. Let's do some swatching. This is my usual colour swatching book. It is, again, Landscape A4. And I have got all my watercolours all my fun pearlescent paints Derwent Graphitint Faber-Castell Polychromos Derwent Drawing Pencils Derwent Artist Pencils my ancient Charisma Colour Pencils some Derwent Ink Tents the lines on here are me trying to see whether I can draw over with Graphite and Neo Colour 1 when they're dry and wet. I've got my Joe Sonia colours and I've got my colour chart that I did for my portable painter palette. Checking out what colours I was going to use in that. And the absolutely scrummy Schmincke Horodam super granulating watercolours on this paper, which is cellulose and some. 100% cotton watercolour paper just to see the difference in the swatching. The first pencil we're swatching here is the Caran d'Ache Luminance Naples Ochre. Sometimes you want that perfect clotted cream colour and it's really hard to achieve by just using a yellow really softly or blending a white over the top of the yellow. This colour is gorgeous. The next colour is Luminance Raw Umber 10%. I've been doing more work that includes wildlife and birds and I wanted some slightly more soft, cool brown colours and this Luminance Raw Umber 10% is beautiful. I 
thought back in the depths of time that to get a softer colour with pencils you just needed to use them more softly but that's not the case and uh, you might think buying a 10% of a colour is a bit pointless but it really isn't, it really expands your palette so much. This third colour is a Faber-Castell Polychromos in brown ochre. This is a really gorgeous wildlife colour. I can see it being used for deer, um, wrens, just, just so many birds and animals. This is the Derwent Lightfast Dusky Pink. It's not what I would describe dusky pink. Um, dusky pink, in my mind, is usually a little bit bluer, almost like a Victorian pink, that sort of crushed velvet. It's more like a, a soft peach or coral. This is Luminance Anthraquinoid Pink. It is vibrant. It's almost mm, slightly neon on the page. It's really interesting. You can see as I am swatching these colours, I'm adding more layers towards the left hand lower side of the circles and that's so that you can see how easily these colours layer up and how much smoother the colours become as you layer them. Some of them look really scratchy as they go down on their first layer but then you start to gently layer them up and you get their full effect. This next colour is a Derwent Drawing Pale Cedar. This I felt would be gorgeous for woodland scenes. It looks a little bit mushroomy in the footage but it is a really soft, soft sagey green. Really pretty. I can see that being sort of soft sunlit tops of trees. And going on from that we then have the Derwent Lightfast foliage and this is a... ah. Oh, perfect, perfect leafy green colour. When I was putting it down I was thinking this is just spring green leaves. It really couldn't be better named. It's perfect. This is the Polychromos Cobalt Green. I bought it specifically because I'm doing a take on a tutorial by an a YouTuber called Nia Nini and Nia does a water sort of seashore wave technique using watercolours and lots of shades of greens and blues. I'm trying it in watercolours myself but I am also giving it a go in coloured pencils. She suggests that it's a lovely way of improving your brush control and the water loading on your your paintbrush and I thought well, it might also be a really good way of improving colour pencil control. Here we have Lightfast Nightshade and this couldn't be a better match for the colour of the nightshade flower. It's Ooh, it's luscious, it's really deep black currenty purple. It's also reminding me of Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. And the final colour is the Derwent Lightfast Forest. I knew what colour it was going to be when I ordered it, but when it actually arrived it did throw me through a bit of a loop. It lays down almost black but then you start to see hints of burnt umber, hints of 
foresty greens. It should make sense because it's called forest. I guess it's evoking the deep shade that you get in real thick forest. and there's all the colours in their final swatches. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.